Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, today's video was going to be about urban slash suburban witchery. And in today's video, is going, I'm going to kind of show you guys some items you can substitute for traditional items on an altar. Um, some people don't live in, I guess, as religiously free families as I grew up in and some other people I know grew up in. Some people live in very, you know, very traditional Christian house, households or very traditional Hindu or Buddhist households or very traditional um, Judaism households, Judaist households, if you will. Um, so in today's video, I just want to show you guys basic things I have on my altar, ways you can substitute them with basic things around your house with spending like zero to very, very little money because I do understand that some of these items are very expensive. You know, for example, my pendulum personally cost me $35. You can make a pendulum for free, but if you have the money and if you choose to spend it that way, then you can. And this is what I personally did. But before I had money to do this, these are some things that I used because, let's face it, not everybody has money growing on trees. So, you know, there was a point in time where I did struggle to find the items I needed necessary for my altar. So real quick, I'm just going to run through what the traditional items on your altar, what on your altar are. Um, as well as things you can substitute them with. So first and foremost is an athemy. And the athemy is associated with the south direction and the fire signs. And this is mine. And it's got some wear and tear because I generally use my athemy to harvest herbs as well as to call the quarters. Um, next you have a chalice. And this is my chalice. And you guys have seen it before. It's it's not super fancy. It wasn't very expensive. I think this was like $7. So it's not the fanciest thing in the world. Um, next we have a wand. And again, you guys have seen my wand hundreds of times, I'm sure. It's made out of birch. Again, it wasn't very expensive. But I do understand not everybody has, you know, 10 to 15, 20, some odd dollars laying around. Um, next, my divination bowl. <clears throat> And I will go through all these um, items more in detail, like what directions they're associated with, ways you can use them. I'm just showing you guys what I have, and then I'm going to go over the list with basically substitutes. So anyway, this is my divination bowl. And again, you guys have seen this before. And my pendulum, which you've seen it before. It's made out of moonstone, which is my birthstone. And I love it. This, like I said, was $35, $40. But it really is bitchin', I'm telling you now. My Book of Shadows, which I've done a video on my Book of Shadows collection. I have quite a few. And no, they are not all this fancy, for those of you wondering. Most of them are actually notebooks I got from Safeway. So it's not necessarily like they ha you have to spend money. Um, an altar, which you guys have all seen my altar videos, um, updated altar videos, what I have on them, yada yada. My bell, you guys have seen this quite a bit as well, and my cauldron, lastly, but certainly not least. And this cauldron, it's like super duper small and petite, which I like about that. I didn't really want a big honking, huge cast iron cauldron, because I don't really use a lot of spells where I need to like actually be making a brew of something. I mostly personally use my cauldron for burning loose incense, um, as well as um, basic divination with tea leaves, if you will. So, let's start this list all over again, starting off with the athemy. Now, you guys saw all of my items of all these things, so I'm not going to hold them up again. Your athemy is associated, like, like with I said, oh my god, that made no sense. Your athemy is associated with the south direction and the fire signs. Um, so basically, any spell involving love or passion, self-growth, um, confidence, success, empowerment, you can use an athme. If you don't have one, you can simply use a steak knife from your kitchen. Or, if you don't have a steak knife, or if you don't want to use a steak knife, you can use a pocket knife. Which, this one's my EMT pocket knife. Holla! And this is actually the one I usually go hiking with, but I do have a separate pocket knife used in my travel altar that I take in my altar all the time. The chalice, which you guys saw, if you don't have a chalice, you can simply use a regular wine goblet as such. If you don't have one of these, you can simply use a regular drinking glass like this one. 
Um, like I said, you don't have to spend a lot of money on this, you guys. Um, despite popular opinion, you can actually do this very cheaply with no money at all. Um, Wicca is a natural-based religion, therefore it's best to use the most natural, sufficient things you can. Um, but like I said, if you have the money to spend and you choose to spend it that way, so be it. If you don't have the money or if you don't have the space or time, these are some options for you. Um, so moving on to the wand, as you guys saw my wand, um, if you don't have a wand, then you can simply just find a stick outside and make your own. My boyfriend found this one, and it's made out of aspen, and it's pretty small. Like It's like the size of my forearm, a little bit longer. And like I said, we were just hiking one day and he found this and he skinned it and consecrated it, rubbed it with oils so I don't get any splinters and I use it as a travel wand. Like I said, if you live in the inner city or if you live in an area where you don't have trees, you can simply go to any craft store or you can go to any craft section in your local grocery store and you can pick up a wooden dowel. And the cool thing about wooden dowels is that they already are craft tools, so therefore you can decorate them way easy. They're totally symmetrical, they're totally round, and you can get a variety of thicknesses and lengths and sizes. Um, so that's one, that's some more options for you if you don't have a wand. Um, I would definitely say that a wand is one of the easier things to get. Actually, all these items are super easy to get. But as far as naturally speaking, a, it's just a stick. Super, super easy, right? Okay divination bowls. Um, you guys already saw mine. If you don't have one, you can simply use your chalice, just fill it with some water, and you can use it the exact same way. Um, if you don't have those items, then you can use a little bowl like this. This one's actually like a humongous cereal bowl for like total fatties, like myself. I like my cereal. Um, and you can just use this as a divination bowl however you need to, however you see fit. Um, Real quick, let me just backtrack a little bit because I feel like I kind of lost you guys on the elements and things like that. As we said, the Athene is associated with the fire signs in the south direction. The chalice, since it obviously holds a liquid, is with the west direction and water signs. So spells involving healing, protection, um, calming, um, anything really involving mental healing or, allevi or alleviating stress, if you will. Don't know if I said that right highly recommend and these are mostly used with offerings to any deity that you celebrate um, as well as for initiations and things like that. Your wand is obviously an extension of power and it is associated with the east direction and the air elements and wands are really good for casting and closing circles as well as an extension of power if you want to kind of make your working circle a little bit wider simply extend your wand and you have that extra space and radius, if you will. Um, your divination bowl is associated with the earth element. Um, it's one of those things where everybody's different. You know, not everybody associates an athne with the fire signs. Not everybody associates a divination bowl with an earth sign. Um, the divination bowls are obviously for that, for divination. You can use a little bit of liquid and you can look at the reflection or you can do some divination using tea leaves or any kind of herbs that you so choose and just kind of note the symbolism that the herbs make on top of the water and then kind of transcribe them later on. Um, so I think we got whew, caught up on that. Pendulums. Um, this was not my first pendulum. Like I said, you guys have seen it a million times, a million times. It's not my first pendulum. These can go very, very expensive, <laughs> okay? Um, there's actually a local crystal shop in town that sells pendulums north of $900 US, which is... It's fucking insane. That's all I'm going to say about that. Um, but if you don't have a pendulum, then you can simply make one with getting a little keychain and some string, or you can use a heavy necklace like the one I have here which the string is actually too long, I think, to even do a demonstration of it. Maybe if I, like, tied it like this. Studying my elbow. Show me yes. Show me no. Give it a minute, it will go. And, um, you know, and, like, I'll show you a demonstration with my regular pendulum. Um, it's not faulty, it's not any different, it's 
literally the exact same. So let me steal this really quick. Show me yes. Show me no. See, so it's not faulty no matter what method you use. And if you don't have a necklace, if you can't wear jewelry, or you don't have a pendulum, you can even use your house keys. Like that's, if they're like on a lanyard or on a small bracelet house key thing, it's the same thing, it works, and it's cheap if not free. And basically a pendulum is for asking yes or no questions. Um, they're really good for finding things. That's usually what I use mine for, is for finding things because I have a really nasty habit of misplacing my wallet. Really, really bad, I know. Um, and I'll just whip out my pendulum and I'll just basically play a game of hot and cold. And it will, you know, am I getting closer and tell me yes or no. So that's one way you can use that. And those are some options to kind of substitute that item if you do not have it. Um, and then we have a book of shadows, which here is mine. If you don't have them, I highly recommend just getting a binder with loose leaf paper. Very, very cheap, extremely cheap. And if you don't have that, any notebook you have laying around, this notebook is actually a book of shadows of mine. And it is my book of Esbats. Um, so, you know, like I said, you don't need to spend a lot of money, you guys. You really don't. Um, there's things you can do, trust me. Um, oh my god, what was that? Almost at 12 minutes. Um, okay, so the last three items are an altar, which is basically your working space. Um, if you don't have an altar, I highly recommend getting a travel altar, which I do have a video on this bad boy right here, what I have in it, what I recommend you put in it. And basically, you just put this on top of your nightstand, um, on the floor if you need to, and you have this flat surface to work with as your altar table, if you will. And the cool thing about box is that, you know, it's got some of the essentials. It's got candles, and, you know, there's another app for me right there. So, you know, it's universal, and it's really small and really inconspicuous. Um, next, we have a bell. And bells are really good for calling deities, the god or goddess, as well as getting the spirit and the element's attention towards a specific ritual or spell you're doing. If you don't have one of those, kind of a poor example, get a few jingle bells from the craft store. And I recommend getting, if you have small ones like this one, several of them, put them on a string and just use that. And it's the same thing. Um, aside from opening a circle and getting the attention of the spirits, if you will, you can also use it to close and kind of disperse their energy. Um, and then very lastly, but certainly not least, we have a cauldron. And like I said, I use mine mostly for loose incense and for divination. You can use it for brews, for potions, spell making, whatever you want. If you do not have one, I highly recommend using your stovetop in a little small pot and um, do this alone or do it when nobody's at home if you live in a house that's not so, I guess, spiritually tolerant. So, yeah, that was my video on urban slash suburban witchery. If you guys liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you have any more suggestions on what kind of videos you want to see next or any comments, questions, concerns, yada, 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 I will post below in the down bar the ways you guys can get a hold of me. But until then, I will see you guys on Saturday. And I wish you all lots of light, love, and blessings. And take care. Bye.